Hi, I'm Amanda Morrell with Edison Group Television, and I'm joined this morning with Keith Jackson, who's the Executive Director of Cook's Global Foods. Welcome, Keith. Hey, hi, Amanda. So it's been an incredibly busy 2015 so far for your company. Um, you've signed some master franchise deals in China and Egypt. Can you tell me how significant mm -hmm. these deals are in relative terms to your ambitious growth plans? Sure. Yes, it has been a very busy start to the year, and there's a lot to go, and we've got some very exciting things happening. Uh, these two recent um, arrangements that we announced are, are very significant for our medium to long term future. Uh, in, in Egypt we've got 50 stores that we've identified uh, that will be built by 2020 uh, and in China the uh, arrangement in Hunan province with uh, a group called Bubu Gao mm -hmm. uh, which stands for better life in, in English uh, is, is for 30 stores within the same period. So that actually will count for 10% of the stores that we expect to have on the ground by 2020. Wow. Okay. So those are very significant arrangements for us and uh, wonderful relationships with both the partners. The, uh, our partners in Egypt are very experienced in the hospitality and restaurant mm -hmm. business. Yeah. Uh, and our partners in China are very experienced with supermarkets. They own over 300 supermarkets. They have more than 3,000 convenience stores and they're currently building 10 shopping malls. Uh, in, in, in the one province of Hunan in China. So they're a fantastic partner and in both cases we're really uh, looking forward to uh, in putting the stores on the ground and, and uh, sharing great Cracking coffee with it. the people in those countries. And you've indicated earlier that Australia and New Zealand are also in your targets. Um, when might these ambitions be realised uh, in, in Australasia? Well we, we don't currently own the, uh, the brand for Australia and New Zealand. And so that's something that uh, we're working on as a long-term plan. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll either have our own brand, which will be different to Esquire's, or we might find some arrangement with the, with the existing owners of that. So we really haven't got a time frame. Okay, that we can talk so it's just that. Uh, something in the back it's of your mind. something in the back yeah. of our minds at the moment that we're yeah. working on. Okay, so you're aiming for 800 stores, is it, worldwide by 2020? That's correct. Yep. That's our, our, uh, our internal target is 800 yep. stores. Yeah, uh, I understand you. the growth rate has been very impressive to date. So is it possible you'll outshoot or uh, surpass that goal before 2020? We, we're very uh, expectant that that number, which mm. is an ambitious target, mm. that we will, we will be into the over 1,000 is really where our management targets are. Okay. Uh, yep. But in anything that we publish, we want to make that a little bit more conservative. Right. Uh, yep. But certainly if we, uh, if we project through the arrangements that we have now with various uh, franchisees and business partners that would actually take us to more than the 800. And so um, can you just explain to me what value uh, progressive processors in Scarborough Fair hold within this food chain? So sure, they're, they're small companies uh, mm -hmm. but they contribute to, to the group by being uh, important parts of the supply chain mm -hmm. uh, and their development arrangements. So the Scarborough Fair has is, is got a, a very very close links into organic coffee and right. tea yeah. uh, and also hot chocolates and things like that mm -hmm. throughout the where we didn't currently ha previously have those arrangements mm -hmm. uh, but now we do so that helps us to make the supply chain more efficient okay. uh, but also enable us to deliver the organic uh, delivery of, mm -hmm. of our whole range of beverages in an organic form and so our whole mantra is about organic and fair trade right. uh, sustainability if you will and sort of ethical type uh, business, mm -hmm. which is, it provides a very good framework for us and, mm -hmm. and a good consumer offering. So to have our supply chain consistent with that is uh, yeah. very important. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Progressive Proceeds is actually a producer of added value kiwi fruit product mm -hmm. and also asparagus and, and can do other horticultural products from New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And so we're using that to, uh, to, to form into new products for our cafes. Uh, examples of that we just launched in China uh, two weeks ago a kiwi fruit based smoothie mm -hmm. which is different to the normal ones it's much more natural it's a cold press type style which is the more modern way yeah. and uh, and the consumer acceptance in the early stage is encouraging mm -hmm. but it's for it's a summer drink so we we're, we're launching that for china so that's the type of thing that we're okay. looking to do yeah, they sound like a good so, fit then yeah, yeah it does but they are long term developments yeah. so not mm -hmm. uh, you know the, and and we can we believe we can add to that and the, the most logical thing mm -hmm. we'd do actually is to add uh, coffee roasting Mm. Uh, to our supply chain thing, whereby we want to take control both of quality right. uh, of, of, the, uh, of what we produce and, and coffee roasting is something that's very much on the radar as well.
Okay, and so is there a particular company that you have your eye on? Uh, no, not at the moment because we're really just slightly below the critical mass mm -hmm. for to make it all work. Mm -hmm. uh, but within the next couple of years, that's something that's very much on the radar mm -hmm. as our, in our strategic planning. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. And so I understand that with uh, respect to the coffee houses, have you made some um, improvements to them in China, uh, Ireland, in, and England, which has helped boost some profits mm -hmm. there? Um, has it been a significant uh, enhancement to the bottom line? And if so, are you planning on doing these improvements throughout the chain? Yep. Yeah, no, that, it's, it's when we uh, took over the business in 18 months ago, there were a number of different expressions of the brand and the way that they were uh, marketed to consumers. And so what we've done is consolidate that. We've mm -hmm. developed up a, a, a new brand based on, on ethical business, on sustainability, mm -hmm. fair trade organic, coming from New Zealand. And, mm -hmm. and New Zealand and Australia are leading the way in coffee development internationally. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called the third wave of coffee development based on antiquity and uh, coffee right. culture. Yep. Uh, so we, we've got a position which is very defendable uh, and one which we're taking to the world. So we then have to uh, upgrade our stores. Mm -hmm. uh, the first ones we've done are in England uh, and the first of those was in Durham. We've now been going 36 weeks there and mm -hmm. we're running at 21.6%. I just worked it out this morning. 21.6% yep. ahead of a year ago. Yeah. So we're really happy with that. And you feel uh, that's owing to the look or the branding behind uh, it? It's, 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 it relates to the, to the look and feel of the store mm -hmm. and it relates, we believe, to the organic uh, and fair trade aspects which, which are very, do resonate mm -hmm. uh, very much in England. And interestingly, in China, we've, we've done similar rebranding mm -hmm. uh, in, in, a, in the middle of Beijing and in, mm -hmm. in a uh, office block area called Oriental Plaza, which mm -hmm. is r right near the CBD. Mm -hmm. And we've only been had that upgraded now for six weeks, but mm -hmm. that's running at almost exactly the same percentage ahead. Okay, interesting. And that's taking, there's a slightly different brand expression in mm -hmm. China where they're, they're very, very keen on, on New Zealand mm -hmm. and they have a very, very high perception of the New Zealand clean green image. Right. And so we've yeah. got, the stores are slightly different, they reflect mm -hmm. a bit more about New Zealand, mm -hmm. uh, but also got some local aspects as well. But, the, and, but that uh, organic uh, message fits well in China as well. So we're really confident about taking that to other places and mm -hmm. building on that success in, in other countries. Mm, okay, and, interesting. Uh, yeah, and Ireland is another area where, mm. same branding, mm -hmm. uh, new stores are opening. Uh, we've had some new stores, we've only had five stores, we've now got six. Right. Uh, the new stores now are, uh, uh, the, the, the one which opened nine weeks ago is the leading store in the world for us, is the biggest mm. uh, biggest that we've got. In, Where is that? In what city? It's, a, it's in a small town called Mullingar, which oh, is right. uh, <laughs> out, about two hours outside Dublin. Okay. Um, and it, but it's a large store, it's 5,000 yeah. square feet, mm -hmm. uh, and it's got some fantastic areas as mm -hmm. well, a little kids area with uh, where they can do educational things, uh, mm. while the parents, uh, mum particularly, is... Uh, enjoying a coffee and, and so it's a really nice uh, look and feel. So. Yeah, different kind of model. Different kind yeah. of model but taking the same philosophies right. uh, and, and running through. So we're really excited about the potential. Mm, good. Um, so I understand recently you've engaged Miro Capital to do a capital review. Mm -hmm. um, at what stage do you uh, expect um, this to be complete and where is it going to lead? Sure. So we, we've got a, a pathway that we've announced to the market that we are taking the, the company through a a, 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 a market change, we would look to go on to the next market. We've mm -hmm. announced that we will become a, a new participant on the next market. Mm -hmm. What we're looking to do with Miro Capital is to determine the extent, if any, of the capital raise. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't announced that yet and we're working through that process now. It's highly likely that we will seek mm -hmm. to raise capital. Uh, our long-term goal is to take then move to the uh, the main board in New Zealand, mm -hmm. uh, and then potentially because of the interest we've got internationally to then take a dual listing uh, situation overseas with one of the, potentially one of the Asian markets. Mm -hmm. That's our sort of long-term strategy. But mm -hmm. in, in the short yeah. term, yeah. Uh, we, we are very focused on, on moving to the next market within the next two months, mm -hmm. uh, and then possibly we'd look to do a capital raise IPO at that same time. Mm. Uh, we'll hopefully have that uh, decision in the next few weeks. So the appetite for coffee is not going away anytime soon. <laughs> the appetite for coffee is growing significantly mm -hmm. internationally. Uh, China's the biggest growth engine, but Asia in general. Mm -hmm. We're just opening our first two stores in Indonesia mm -hmm. this month mm -hmm. uh, as well. But China, they have five cups of coffee per head per annum. 
So yeah. the potential there is, is amazing. It's big consumption. That's right. But even in, in a place well developed markets mm. like the UK, mm -hmm. the market's growing at seven to ten percent mm. per annum. Mm. So there's a big potential to grow yet and, and yeah. we we're trying to get a, ne a good niche of that, mm. which is based on our principles of organic and fair trade. Uh, and we're very confident we can do that. Keith, thanks for joining us. Keith Jackson is Executive Chairman of Cook's Global Foods. And if you'd like to learn more about uh, this company, you can hop online to edisongroup.com television, and there's plenty of research for you there. Thanks for joining us.